California, we know if you're a Second Amendment person, if you like firearms, you know that if you've been traveling around this country, technically you're not supposed to bring those with you when you go into California, at least until today. Maybe a federal judge last week overturned California's 32-year assault weapons ban. Now, that doesn't mean that it's a free-for-all in California, but might be going that way. No, I'm just kidding. It's going to take some time for the effects of this ruling to flesh themselves out throughout California. It is a big ship to turn. California has very stringent firearm rights. If you're a Second Amendment person, there are some pretty amazing apps on your phones that you can actually just download and it will show you what the rules are in different states. Every time you go on California, it's like yellow or red. It's terrible. So now we see a federal judge kind of saying enough of this garbage. Okay. The second amendment is a constitutional right. We had the case in Heller from the U S Supreme court that sort of ex that uh, defined that a little bit more clearly for us. And now we're starting to see maybe the tide turn. We got some background from this story here from the New York times written by Mike Ives last week says federal judge overturns 32 year assault weapons ban Friday. There was a, he, he called it a failed experiment prompting a sharp retort from the state's governor. California has prohibited the sale of assault weapons in 1989. The law was challenged in a suit filed in 2019 by the, against the state's attorney general by the, by the plaintiff and the San Diego County Gun Owners Club. The judge, Roger T. Benitez, he wrote that the sections of the state's penal code defined assault weapons and restricted their use are hereby declared unconstitutional and shall be enjoined. Right. I'm going to show you what he says here by this. Uh, he's basically giving the government some time to be on notice about this and start implementing the changes. I'm going to show you what he means specifically. But the judge said that he granted a 30 day stay of the ruling at the request of the attorney general, a move that would allow Mr. Bonta to appeal it. So, as I said before, you know, before we go crazy here and you know doing cartwheels in the streets with your AR-15s, keep in mind that this is a, you know this is appealable. And the legislature is going to respond and California, it, look, they've been depriving you of your second amendment rights for 32 years. They're going to try to extend that as long as they can. So hold tight. AR-15 re-entered the American market in 2004 after the end of the federal assault weapons ban has a national following among gun, gun owners. Also been used in mass shootings. Newsom Worst governor in America wrote that comparing the gun to a Swiss army knife completely undermines the credibility of this decision and is a slap in the face to the families who've lost loved ones to this weapon. In a separate statement, Bonta called Judge Benitez's decision fundamentally flawed, vowed to appeal it, which of course they will. He says that there is no sound basis in law, in fact, or common sense for equating assault rifles with Swiss army knives, especially on gun violence awareness day. <laughs> Uh, after the recent shootings in our own California communities, gun activists celebrated. Yeah, they should. I wonder if that judge did that intentionally. Did he do that intentionally, do you think? Releases this opinion on Gun Violence Awareness Day. I didn't even know that was a thing. I don't know if he knew that was a thing or not. But if he did, oh man, that is great. Brandon Combs, the president of the Firearms Policy Coalition, a group in Sacramento that helped to bring the lawsuit, said, that the ruling held what millions of Americans already know to be true. Bans on so-called, quote, assault weapons are unconstitutional and cannot stand. Gottlieb, founder of the Second Amendment Foundation, another group that was involved, said this statement, the judge's ruling had, quote, shredded California gun control laws regarding modern semi-automatic rifles. He said it is clear the judge did his homework on this ruling. Benitez was appointed district judge 2003 in 2017. I remember this guy. I remember reading about him. Blocked a new California law that would have banned a magazine more than 10 rounds. Three judge panel upheld his ruling last year, but the appeals court said that the 11. Yeah, we talked about him previously. I think that's right. That's where this was. So Judge Benitez, who we're going to see here in a minute, I actually think he was in the uh, he was on the thumbnail on the video. We've talked about him before. He's been involved in prior gun cases. 10 round magazine was a limit that California imposed. He threw that out. Now there was a the Ninth Circuit also threw that out and they're going to reappeal it to the full panel. Some critics of the judge's latest ruling says it was handed down on the national gun violence awareness day. The ruling is alarming and wrong said somebody else. It's an insult to the families across the nation. 
Here is a copy of the order. Here's the decision. I want to show you this introduction, okay? One of the more, the more epic introductions that you'll see in legal writing. It says, like the Swiss Army knife, the popular AR-15 rifle is a perfect combination of home defense weapon and homeland defense weapon. No, he says homeland defense equipment. All right. Good for both home and battle. The AR-15 is the kind of versatile gun that lies at the intersection of the kinds of firearms protected under Heller. Yet the state of California makes it a crime to have an AR-15 type rifle. Therefore, the court declares the California statutes to be unconstitutional. Oh my gosh, that's so great. Plaintiffs challenge a net of interlocking statutes that impose strict criminal restrictions, complex definition of what assault weapon means. Second Amendment, quote, elevates above all other interests the right of law-abiding responsible citizens to use arms in defense of hearth and home. This comes from Heller. Supreme Court holds that the Second Amendment protects guns commonly owned by law-abiding citizens for lawful purposes. At the same time, the Second Amendment confers an individual right to keep and bear arms. And although the Supreme Court cautioned the Second Amendment does not guarantee a right to keep and carry any weapon whatsoever... There is no evidence that the Supreme Court intended that language to be a license to avoid its common sense holding in average contexts. This case is not about extraordinary weapons lying at the outer limits of Second Amendment protection. The banned, quote, assault weapons are not bazookas, howitzers, or machine guns. Those arms are dangerous and solely useful for military purposes. Instead, the firearms deemed, quote, assault weapons are fairly ordinary, popular, modern rifles. This is an average case about average guns used in average ways for average purposes. One is to be forgiven if one is not persuaded by the news media and others that the nation is awash with murderous AR-15 white rifles. The facts, however, do not support this hyperbole. Facts matter, they say. FBI murder statistics do not track assault rifles, but they do show that killing by knife attack is far more common than murder by any kind of rifle. In California, murder by knife occurs seven times more often than murder than rifle. For example, according to FBI, in 2019, California saw 252 people murder with a knife, while 34 people were killed with some type of rifle, not necessarily an AR-15. Californian is three times more likely to be murdered by an attacker's bare hands, fists, or feet than by his rifle. In 2018, the statistics were even more lopsided, as California only saw 24 murders by some type of rifle. Same pattern can be observed across the nation. Hmm. Yeah, which is interesting because if you've been somebody following this channel, you know that we talk about the different levels of scrutiny. In other words, if the government is going to pass a law that Im imposes some burden on you and it imposes that burden on a fundamental constitutional right, there better be a damn good reason for doing that. In this case, if they're going to be imposing on your right to keep and bear arms, something that is in the Second Amendment, it is the Second Amendment, and it's been... Uh, very, very clearly defined by the Supreme Court recently in the case of Heller, if they're going to impugn that right, that fundamental constitutional right, if they're going to try to take that away from you, there better be a good justification for it. The justification that assault weapons are some sort of dangerous menace to society is not accurate. The judge just went through, gave you the data from California's own numbers. So what, what, what is the justification then? If they're really concerned about the loss of life, maybe they should deal with handguns. Maybe they should deal with knives, which are way bigger in terms of loss of life than rifles are. But it's not about that, as we know. It's about a political movement, not about data. Plaintiffs, they challenge all of these different codes. Look at this. We've got 30, look at all these different We've got uh, 3,800 assault weapons restricting uh, it, this not even going to read it. It is declared that these statutes unconstitu unconstitutionally infringe upon these rights. Judge says here in line 13, you might not know it, but this case is about what should be a muscular constitutional right and whether the state can force a gun policy choice that impinges on that right with a 30-year-old failed experiment. Love that. Muscular guns, baby. It should be an easy question and answer. Government is not free to impose its own new policy on choices of American citizens where constitutional rights are concerned. Heller explains the Second Amendment takes certain policy choices and removes them beyond the realm of permissible state action. The state doesn't have the authority to act on those things. California may certainly conceive of a policy that a modern rifle is dangerous in the hands of a criminal, and it is therefore good public policy to keep modern rifles 
out of the hands of every citizen. The Second Amendment, though, stands as a shield from government imposition of that policy. And that's exactly why we have it. Right? That's why it's the Second Amendment. Not 27, it's number two. There is only one policy enshrined in the Bill of Rights. Guns and ammunition in the hands of criminals, tyrants, and terrorists are dangerous. Guns in the hands of law-abiding responsible citizens are better. To give full life to the core right of self-defense, every law-abiding responsible individual citizen has a constitutionally protected right to keep and bear firearms commonly owned and kept for lawful purposes. In early America and today, the Second Amendment right of self-preservation permits a citizen to repel force by force when the intervention of society in his behalf may be too late to prevent that injury. Then, as now, Second Amendment may be considered a true palladium of liberty. Fortunately, government tends to restrict the right of self-defense. The court does not lightly enjoin a state statute. However, while the court is mindful that the government has a legitimate interest in protecting the public from gun violence, it is equally mindful that the Constitution remains a shield from the tyranny of the majority. Something Alexis de Tocqueville wrote. As Senator Kennedy said, the judiciary is and often the only protector of individual rights that are at the heart of democracy. Law-abiding citizens are imbued with the unalienable right to keep and bear modern firearms. Yes. Mm, mm, yes. Love that. That was really good. Yes. Love it. All right. So temporary stay. What does he want here? The attorney general asked for a stay of the injunction pending the appeal. So as we heard, he said, okay, this is enjoined. All of these statutes, they're all garbage. Second Amendment is, is more important than all of your other justifications for trying to impinge upon that right. But he also makes note, we're going to temporarily just stay this thing. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to order this, but we're going to hold it because the attorney general has a lot of work to do. And he does, no question about it. So, of course, he's going to appeal it, take it up to the Ninth Circuit, and we'll see what they do with it. Here, we're wrapping up. It says the defendant, Attorney General Rob Bonta, they have to do all of this stuff. Let's see here. They have to, and those in active concert and participation with him, and those duly sworn who gain knowledge of this injunction order or who know of the existence of this order, they are hereby enjoined from implementing or enforcing California Penal Code, any of these. Okay, can't, you can't enforce any of these laws anymore, is what this judge is saying. Can't enforce any of this stuff. Uh, defining an assault weapon, doesn't matter. Assault weapons obtained by bequest or inheritance, doesn't matter. If you want to inherit your, your AR-15, no problem. Restricting the importation of those, quote, assault weapons by new residents, nope, not at all. Move to California, order an AR. Restricting use of those registered assault weapons, nope. Don't, don't have to worry about that, right? The, whatever that law is. Prohibiting, prohibiting the possession of assault weapons by minors, also gone. The defendant attorney general shall provide, within 10 days, the government shall issue a declaration establishing proof of the notice. So they have to basically post notice of this. They got to notify everybody. Hey, tell your people, your attorney general, your chief of police, your prosecutor, your district attorney, tell your staff, tell your people, the court has spoken love it mm. disgusting slap in the face says california governor newsom right fred gutenberg is the father of one of the pupils killed at the florida high school in 2018 told cnn people are going to die because of this ruling except for the loss of my daughter for all the other victims okay well comparing an ar-15 to a swiss army knife is a disgusting slap in the face says newsom he issued a statement on friday said that a district judge in san diego was appointed by bush he was unlawfully depriving law-abiding Californians of their rights. All right, so the rest of this is pretty standard stuff. I want to show you what's going on with gun purchases, by the way. So Zero Hedge over here says gun stocks get a bump after California judge overturns the assault weapons ban. Background checks break new record. So I'm pretty sure that the gun control argument is kind of over, I think. I think. I mean, they're still going to try. But even, you know, Beto, Beto, he's not even around anymore. He's, he's still around, but that whole, remember, that was his whole campaign, gun violence. He's going to be, you know, the, the gun grabber of America. But we have Heller now. We've got most of the courts who I think are coming on board now saying, look, enough of this stuff. It doesn't work. It's, it's garbage. And politically, the American people are, they're just buying guns all day. So nobody, that's not slowing down at all. Shares in firearm related stocks, they nudged higher on Monday. Federal judge overturned that case. We just talked about that. Vista Outdoor, American Outdoor Brands, Ammo Inc., Sturm Ruger, Smith & Wesson, Claris, they all saw gains. 
in early trading. S&P was down today, but they're all moving up. So people are buying, buying firearms and the stock market is responding. Positive action in firearms also follows a Friday report that FBI background checks hit nearly 4.7 million in the month of March. The most since records began 20 years ago. And it's not even a little bit. It's a 77% increase. Okay. Massive accessories, backlogs, everybody's backlog. I don't know if you've been to a gun store lately, you try to find ammo lately. It's just not around. According to CNN, a record number of those purchasing guns are first time buyers. That's right, baby. We've also seen in times of civil unrest that we see people go out and they say that they need to protect themselves. Yep. Says Jack McDivitt. So they are going to buy guns to protect themselves. The only question is, will they learn to use them? I hope so. I hope so. You can get a, get a lot of get a lot of return on your time with a simple firearms course. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you. Yeah, I mean, it's um, well, I've shared that story before. Let me show you what the graphs look like. FBI firearm background checks monthly going up from 2007 down here, right around about a million. We're up to uh, here, 2021. Look at that, baby. We got we're talking over four and a half million background checks month of May alone, relative uh, so, uh, rel the comparison between months. So in May, May 2020, we had 3 million. May 2021, 3.2 million. And in 2019, 2.3 million. So we jumped up about 650,000 new background registrations in 2020 versus 2019. Steady clip. What happened, in, what happened here? Oh, yeah. It was the summer of unrest. Remember that? Happened here in Arizona. We had hooligans running around Scottsdale Road right there it happened all over Minneapolis and, and everywhere around the country Portland Seattle people started to say huh kind of don't want that happening to my business looks like the cops aren't around maybe it's time to make sure that I protect myself by a firearm good move let's take a look at some of the questions over from watching the watchers .locals.com. if you want to support the show you can go to this address it's watching the watchers .locals.com. we're also on rumble we also have several new channels down in the description below that i would love to invite you to check those out question number one here is from john delar says justice roberts is not a conservative quit counting him as one Everything Bush touched turned to shirt. And Roberts is a great reminder of his disastrous presidency for Republicans. He is an embarrassment. Yeah, I, you know, you're right. I, I you're actually right. I actually, I, I do categorize Judge Roberts as a conservative because he was, you know, he's kind of middle of the road there. Candidly, I think Judge Roberts is a lot more interested in the legacy of the court and the public perception of the court as the chief justice. So I don't think he's really a liberal or conservative. Uh, honestly, I think he's somebody more interested in the public perception of the court and the legitimacy of the court and how it acts as an institution in society more so than he is any particular policy outcome. And I mean that, I mean, he doesn't uh, abortion. He's got, a, he's got a, an opinion on it, right? Gun rights, all of these, he's got opinions on those things. And he'll try to work those in, but not at the expense of any thing that would jeopardize the institution. And we saw this with what he did back uh, during Obamacare. Remember when that case hit the Supreme Court? He allowed it to go through because he categorized it as a tax. Awful uh, legal justification, in my opinion. Does John Roberts know that? One of the smartest legal minds in the history of the world? Yeah, he knows that. So why did he do it that way? And he knows it's, it's a garbage argument. He knows that it's not right. He knows that it just got straight. He knows all of that. Why did he make that decision? To protect the court. We have a new president who just got swept into power. This is his first big domestic policy achievement on the back of a lot of political momentum to have the Supreme Court come out and throw that case out. Wasn't going to do that. So he had to find a way to make it work more interested in the institution than he is the outcomes. And a lot of people don't like that, myself included. You know, you have, a, you have a job to do. I understand protecting an institution, but we didn't put you in there to protect the institution. You know, you got the nomination to rule on cases, is my opinion. Hack Consulting says, how many people have died to Swiss Army knives? 
How dare Governor Newsom minimize the trauma of being hacked to death or corkscrewed just because they didn't quickly die from a gunshot wound? Recall Newsom. It's a good point there, Hack. Yeah. Yeah, why doesn't he go after those knives? Hack says, the Second Amendment here has no fringe cases, does it? Why would a citizen have a howitzer? Why would we want that? Well, if surplus military equipment were sold to private individuals to own and maintain during peacetime, the military could surge their capacity by renting, leasing those surplus equipment later. Also, private citizens are more able to figure out experimental upgrades to our military and argue for better fixes than the military can. So, I, I, heck, I think what I gathered from that comment is that you want to buy a howitzer, which I don't have any arguments there. I would also like to have a howitzer one day. Maybe we'll have a howitzer together and we'll go shoot it. <laughs> Chairman of the board says, is there an actual legal definition anywhere of assault rifle? Um... Yeah, it's a very it's a firearm that's very uh, offensive and sometimes places you in immediate apprehension of imminent offensive contact. <laughs> that's the definition of assault. The uh, imminent. So this is the old common law definition of assault: placing another individual in uh, reasonable apprehension of imminent offensive contact. I think that's the tortious definition from the restatement. If I correct, I, I could be totally wrong on this. So the the assault rifle would be. Any person or, or, or uh, any action that puts any individual in reasonable apprehension of imminent offensive contact with a gun. That's the legal definition, according to yours. Uh, he says, no, honestly, chairman of the board, I don't know if there is. There probably are uh, many attempts to define that, but it's a stupid definition. Uh, P.S. A cute dog contest is broken out in the live comments over at watchingthewatchers.locals.com. That's right. Cute dog contest. Oh, my gosh. Chairman of the board probably leading the way on these cute dogs. If you want to be a part of that. Got to get over there at watchingthewatchers.locals.com. And thank you, Chairman, for helping me plug that show. All right, let's take a look. We got a big one over here from E. Dantes says, Rob, get this. A friend was in Mexico along with his wife and friend in the friend's truck, which had a lockbox fixed to the truck that had a pistol in it. My friend and wife had no idea there was any lockbox or gun. They crossed the border. The Mexican federales pulled them over. They had to spend nine days in Mexican prison. Oh, my gosh. They had to pay all kinds of fines and what really equates to ransom money. The other person is still in prison in Mexico. Oh, my gosh. Moral of the story, don't take any weapon into Mexico, even if it's in a lockbox and you think it's no big deal. Also, that's good advice. Also, the difference in the freedoms we have here in America are so much better than in many countries in the world. My friend said he is ever going anywhere Going near anyone who is going to badmouth America, he is decking them. Hopefully by decking, you mean, you know, handing them a deck of cards and saying, let's play solitaire together, right? Peacefully. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you know, Mex Me uh, yeah, it's a look, I come on this channel and we, and we beat up on the government a lot here, but we have a pretty damn good country, not because of the government. OK, it's because of the principles that we as a citizenry have established here and we hold the line every time they try to encroach upon them. That's why it's a great place. It's, it's not because of the government. It's because of the principles and it's because of the people that implement and demand that those principles be maintained. And otherwise, it's, you know, it's 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 a, a quick descent into a country that just washes those civil liberties right down the toilet. I don't want to live in that country. We have Hack Consulting says, if we cannot trust our public health officials to not cover up their failures, even at the great cost of lives lost, then how can we trust the designation of mental illness by these same type of experts? Or anything they say, really. Perhaps the issue is that people's rights are violated all over of something truly wrong, the patient's head. The Second Amendment says, shall not be infringed, so why is mental illness allowed as a disqualifier? I see what you're saying. If the person is truly insane, why do we keep them alive? If someone is getting money for the hopeless, correct the Second Amendment. If a person is truly insane, why do we keep them alive? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, my goodness. Well, it's because they're humans, you know, and maybe they can become not insane anymore and we can help them through it. And just because somebody might be, uh, you know, not well doesn't mean that their life is meaningless. Yeah. So. Uh, it's a good question. Thank you for that hack. We have Furby Slayer here says Second Amendment 2A says arms. The knife is exactly the same thing by letter of the writing it says arms. The knife is exactly the same thing by the letter of the writing. So Second Amendment says arms. When the amendment was written, the, the citizens had everything, including cannons and warships. All the weapons were predominantly in the possession of the citizens. It's a, good, it's a great point, right? It's like, you know, I, I don't I don't know. 
did Washington, did Franklin, did Jefferson, did Adams, did anybody back there? You know what? Maybe they had a cannon. Can we have a cannon or the modern equivalent of a cannon? I'm game for that. All right. Great questions, everybody. That was a good show. Thank you so much for lobbing all those questions in. And all of those questions came over from watching the watchers.locals.com. I want to welcome the, the new people who signed up here today and are supporting us and joining the great community. Welcome. Big welcome to Sparrow 61. Welcome to the community. Furby Slayer. Saw Furby in the house today. Got a question from Furby. Welcome. We have Harleen Quinzel. Now, Harley, Harley Quiz, Quinzel. Welcome to the community. Uh, very happy to have you here. We have V Bittersweet is here. We have Julie Girl, V Bittersweet, maybe very bittersweet. Julie Girl's in the house. And Tech130, welcome to the community as well. Love all of you. Thank you so much for your support. And I really do mean that. Great questions came in from all of you here on the board today. Thank you so much for those. And if you didn't participate in the show and you want to, you can sign up at watchingthewatchers.locals.com so that you can ask questions. But there's a lot of other stuff you can get as well like a free copy of my book. It's called Beginning to Winning. It's available as a PDF for you to download for free. We also have a copy of the slides that are also available for you. You can go and download everything we went through today. You can download a copy of my impeachment party documents or my personal productivity system. It's called Existence Systems. We share links throughout the day. We have great people there, a lot of great people. And in fact, I actually, I'm thinking about you know trying to maybe do a, a weekend show. So yesterday at watchingthewatchers.locals.com, I posted a Sunday shout out went through some of the comments. I think it's about 15 minutes. And uh, so, I, so I posted that for supporters only. If you want to get some of that sort of lower key, let, you know, let your hair down a little bit. It's Sunday night. Don't have PowerPoints. Kind of relax. Going to try to do more of that over at Locals. And so you can check that out if you want to go there and be a part of that. You can also Join us for our next monthly meetup, which is going to be happening via Zoom. June 26th is the next one. Again, this is free for everybody at watchingthewatchers.locals.com. Also free, our Law Enforcement Interaction Training Seminar. It's coming up this weekend. Oh, my goodness. Saturday, June 12th at 12 Eastern. It's going to be about 90 minutes, maybe two hours. We're going to talk about how to deal with law enforcement. So uh, I'm going to get the registration probably posted tonight. I can't Where did the time go. Oh, my goodness. So I'm going to post that over at, uh, at Locals tonight, maybe tomorrow. And uh, if you want to be a part of that, we'll have it pinned to the top. You can register and then we'll look forward to seeing you on Saturday. Lastly, before we get out of here, I am a criminal defense attorney. I know I don't plug that too much throughout the show, but that's really what we do on a daily basis. Got a whole team of people here in Scottsdale that are absolutely passionate about helping good people facing criminal charges, find safety, clarity, and hope in their cases and their lives. And so if you know anybody in the state of Arizona that is facing criminal charges, we would love the opportunity to help. And I mean it, whether it is a misdemeanor case or a felony case or a traffic violation or it's an old case we can help we help people with duis domestic violence drug offenses uh, some of the disorderly conduct things things you see in old town or sixth street or whatever that is in your town a lot of people are out there you know sort of getting getting uh, uh, emerging from the covid cocoon and sometimes you know law enforcement will just round everybody up and charge them with crimes and so if you need help or you know somebody that needs help we would love the opportunity to be able to provide that for them. If they are in the state of Arizona, we offer free case evaluations. And as I mentioned, we are just, we'd love to help people find safety, clarity, and hope in their cases, and then hopefully their lives. So if you have any referrals, we would be humbled and honored if you sent them our way. Otherwise, my friends, we're going to be right back here, same time, same place tomorrow. It's going to be at 4 p.m. Arizona time, 5 p.m. Mountain, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. on that East Coast for that one Florida man, not Georgia woman, but Florida man out there. Everybody have a tremendous evening. I will see you right back here tomorrow. Bye-bye.